We've laid out this sort of downroad spiral that we're seeing uh, in the property market. How are, you, how are you seeing things? I mean, if we see some sort of default in a developer like Country Garden, what would happen? Okay. I think uh, one of the um, narratives that I picked up from you guys is a lot of things are priced in. Um, if you, I think if you kind of look back what happened on the property market for the past 18, 24 months, you see that um, late, um, maybe kind of October, September period last year, it was the really the trough. We are getting close to, to that case uh, in terms of the pricing of the bonds, mm -hmm. which means that a lot of the bad news is already priced in. I think that, that would be the first statement. I think the second statement here is that um, we still believe there will be survivor um, of the situation. Um, but a lot of it will hinges on the policy support and the recovery on the fiscal market. What happened since the beginning of the year of the reopening and the policy is that we get a pretty strong rebound, both in terms of physical market and the bond prices, probably um, first quarter this year. And as the physical market loses a little bit of steam, um, the prices start softening again. So. A lot of it will be hinges on the fiscal market recovery, which um, we have seen um, the Chinese government have put in a lot of policy, both in terms of relaxation. There's also some comments uh, that potentially in first tier city, there will be a little bit more support as well. And we do think that there are still um, buying pent up demand on property, particularly on the high tier city, high qualities. So as and when there's a little bit more visibility and stabilization of the broader economy, plus the policy support, then that could be the potential uh, fiscal market recovery. And I think in terms of pos positioning and thinking about the sector, we think some of the larger um, state-owned enterprise operating in the property market with recurring income potentially will still be um, doing pretty kind of stable and relatively stronger compared to some of the um, uh, POE, which is the privately owned enterprise on the property side. You, you mentioned we're, we're back to the levels almost of October of last year, right? On high yield bonds, I imagine, is what yeah. you're, you're, you're alluding to there. Yes. It's a different world, though, now, right? It was COVID zero. There was no policy support. Uh, there was no policy intention, for example. Growth was at, I think, maybe 2%. We're yeah. now at 5 yeah. But the prices are the same. So my question is, is it too cheap now, actually, just to play the devil's advocate there? What would you be buying? Um, I think... Uh, the, the, the market is definitely reacting to a lot of the bad news, not just on the um, country garden situation, mm. but maybe to some extent some of the macro data that we're getting, mm. some of the headline news that is popping up, which is where you guys have started the conversation saying that there's a lot of bad news that is keep coming. Mm. And that's probably why the market have been quite depressed and reacted quite, uh, quite a lot mm. in, in regarding to the negativity. Um, overall, I think as a longer term investors, um, there are opportunities still within I would say the broader Asian high yield market or even the broader Asian fixed income market. Okay. Um, property, you will need to be relatively careful. You need to have a slightly really longer horizon to wait for, or wait to, for, to see the kind of physical market recovery so, to reflect it into the bond prices. But out of it, I think there are still a lot of opportunities within the Asian high yield space, be it Macau Gaming, some of the high quality banking papers, um, and, and even looking at the Indo-Indonesian markets as well.